Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Game Junk Podcast, episode 179, recording on Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. My name is Frank. My name is Sean. And my name is Andrew. And we will be talking about the Sony state of play for January 2024, all the announcements, all our thoughts. Some of you may be thinking, wait a second, we're not getting the top tens yet again. <laughs> And well, I, I was pretty sick this week, so we had to do some delaying and moving around of all podcast episodes, but we are planning to record the top 10 immediately after this, and it will launch later in the week as basically our show for next week. So it will be recorded within the month of January to satiate Sean. He was losing it if it wasn't out. I mean, technically it's not out before the end of J January, but uh, it's recorded before the end of January. I've like basically been uh, eating vitamin C and taking medicine all day just to get this in for Sean. He yeah, I would not, not let Frank take another day off. I said, absolutely not. So it's coming uh, very shortly. The, the, spit, the, the game junk master has spoken. No more days off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm ready to go. And so, but that's the next episode. Let's get into the big news of today. The Sony state of play uh, just kind of popped up out of nowhere and some pretty big announcements, depending on uh, who you ask, I think, and an update on some Silent Hill stuff that people are talking about. So let's just go in order. Might burn through some of these, but we're going to, we're going to burn through. First up. Hell Divers 2. What did you guys think of Hell Divers 2? <laughs> Nothing to say about Hell Divers 2. I mean, it's I'm I'm curious. I don't think I'll be buying it day one. See if any anyone convinces me otherwise. Yeah, I thought it looked uh like it had some polished like cape physics and some nice blood effects. But uh by cape physics, I mean cloth physics. Uh but no, it, these are it, specifically cape physics. <laughs> <laughs> it really reminded me of um what's that? Is it Outriders? That like game that came out that has like the purple like yeah. uh logo and stuff. It started to remind me of that game where it's just like a bunch of shooting and I don't really know what else. Uh so there's a lot of games like that, and that's kind of what Suicide Squad is. I should say we're yeah, well, I'll talk about Suicide Squad a bit and what we played. Uh but yeah, these kind of looter shooter co-op games, horde shooters, a lot of companies taking their shot at them. Uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a double A version of that based on how Exo Primal did from Capcom. I'm not expecting this to do that well. I will be buying it. It's only $50. Uh, I'm in the most hazy blue phase of my life. Uh, it's been a while since I've been this into the Sony ecosystem, even debating buying like the, the portable or portal and some other things. So dipped my toes back in the PSVR two. I'm fully back. So this was a good day for the state of play for me, but yeah, hell divers two. My note here is please stop cramming this game down our throats. If we want to play it, we'll play it. Every time you try to tell me I need to play this, I'm a little more skeptical. I mean, there were a couple games like that where I felt like we're kind of on overload in terms of how many times we've seen it. But I mean, this was just the kickoff trailer. There wasn't really much else. Behind. I only have one other game like that, Sean. We can. Okay. Probably the same one, but. Is it Foam Stars? No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I, well, I was thinking Zenless Zone Zero. How many times? Oh, okay, okay that one too. That one is almost plays like an ad in the middle of this thing. So let's talk yeah. about those two games. So, uh, Zenless Zone Zero, a new game. Is it the Hoyoverse? Am, am I getting that right? The yeah. company yeah. that makes uh, Genshin Impact. And I don't know if it's exclusive to PlayStation. It it's might be, uh, but yeah, I don't know what this is. It's clearly. A little payola trying to get some cash from this thing but i will say graphically it looks pretty decent for a free-to-play game i'm assuming that's what it is i don't know for sure but it, it looks good yeah i'm almost positive it's not sony exclusive like all their games are like mobile first is kind of their main thing um yeah but i i did like the look of it it's just i feel like i've seen it a lot without really getting 
a lot of detail as to what the game is. Uh, so I've just kind of seen the same flashy trailers for a while now, but um, yeah, I, I, I would say all almost all the trailers in this showcase to me were looked very nice, but I just didn't really feel much beyond that. I wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to play that. I was kind of like, oh, that looks nice, but maybe not Your really needle my thing. Didn't move. Yeah, pretty we much. <laughs> um, I must say, I was surprised that. They ha now did they announce this game before? Does yeah, I've know? heard about Zenless Zone Zero before. I'm okay, part. because I'm a little, I'm kind of surprised still that they have this game and they're showing us so soon. Just because they just came out with that Hokai Star Rail game mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, which is confused. which is a pretty big game, and it, I thought this was that. To be honest, um, when I first saw it, I, I haven't played Hokai Star Rail yet, so maybe they're very different, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. They just seem to be pumping out these games. They must have so much cash. They probably have like 25 teams going over there. So oh, yeah. I don't they're, know. They're making a lot of money over there. Yeah. And Foam Stars, the Splatoon clone from Square Enix, which is a featured game on PlayStation Plus this or February, I should say, coming out next week. I mean, I think I might have said the first time we saw this trailer, this is destined to be a PlayStation Plus game. And it is now I think confirmed. You did say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I would <laughs> based on the game. But uh, I guess if the if it takes off and is a pleasant surprise, I'll give it a poke. But nothing, I just bought Splatoon 3. So nothing about this is making me want to play this game instead of Splatoon 3, despite my blue haze. Yeah. I mean, it's if they had reserved the announcement of it being on PlayStation plus for the show, that might've been like a cool little, Oh, that's neat. But like they already announced that. Uh, so there was nothing really exciting here about that. Yeah. I have negative interest in this game. I kind of wish <laughs> I didn't watch this trailer. All right, moving on backing up a little bit. We skipped ahead to get rid of some of the turds, do a little turd cleanup like cult of the lamb. Uh, <laughs> next up, Stellar Blade, which I was expecting to see. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on this one? I I actually thought it looked quite polished, though I didn't really like this trailer. I thought it went on way too long. So much talking and like stuff they could have shown in probably 10 seconds. They took a couple minutes to show. Even at 2x speed, it felt long. Uh, that's not a good sign. So... Um, but once they got into the combat kind of later on, I did think it looked pretty polished and, and you know, kind of interesting. Um, it reminded me almost like Bayonetta meets uh, Nier Automata. Yeah, and so, Nier Automata. Yeah, so, or maybe just mostly at Nier Automata. But um, I, I'm kind of interested in this game, actually. Oh, I see the Bayonetta stuff, too. I, you know, I completely agree. All the story stuff and lore at the beginning was very long. And if anything, that accentuates how similar the world is to Nier Automata. Uh, if I if I just saw a, a kind of smash cut highlight thing, I wouldn't have been as aware of this whole setup is almost Nier Automata, uh, which I don't really care. Ultimately, like, games rip each other off all the time. Uh, but I, I agree. When the combat ma montage played at the end, looks good. Another game that it's just going to depend on. I'm in. How good is the combat going to be? There's so many good action games. Will it stack up? And if it does, I mean, I'm going to buy it anyway, but uh, it could be could be great, I think. So I didn't even remember anything about this game previously. Like, I don't know when it was shown previously, but I did like the world. So maybe I need to play Nier Automata because I haven't played it. But, oh, dude, you would uh, love Nier Automata. Yeah, this, I mean, how, it's, it's how have we not figured this out for Sean? Like, there's 26 endings. It's got this meta. <laughs> you would love <laughs> And they're, they're not like real endings. Like love it. Weird endings. Yeah, it's a total mind fuck, dude. You would love Near Automata. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah, it's, it's on my list somewhere. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it looked good. I actually thought it almost felt like they were trying not to show combat at, 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 until the end. But yeah. even at the end, when they showed it, it was more like, finishing moves like weird kind of cinematic elements of the combat i still don't really know what the combat is yeah uh, i don't disagree about the so, nature of the combat the the montage at the end felt more about showcasing the enemies which i did think had cool designs 
I mean, that's one theme of all the action games, third person action games, whether it's Black Myth, uh, Stellar Blade, Rise of the Ronin, Wo Long. All these games have the, especially the games from Japan, have the coolest like enemies and Dragon's Dogma, throw that one in there. Like such creative enemy and creature designs. Like it, it never ceases to amaze me how many cool new ideas people can come up with for these uh, bosses and enemies in games. They look so good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, speaking of looking so good, Sonic Shadow Generations. I don't know if this is officially Sonic Cross Shadow. Sonic X Shadow Generations. X, yeah. Sonic X. As this was playing, I thought, uh-oh, how have I not thought of this before? Sonic Adventure 3. How they bring all these Sonic games back. They did Sonic the Hedgehog 4. There's kind of a a mild following and appreciation for the first two Sonic adventures. To me, this looks like kind of Sonic adventure three, but naming it something different. I really don't care, obviously. Yeah. So I believe uh, I'm just reading this now on the PlayStation blog, but I had heard that there was rumors that they were going to do a remake of Sonic generations. It looks like that's kind of what this is. It says greatest hits playlist of iconic 2d and 3d Sonic levels from Sonic generations. Wasn't Sonic Generations a collection of old Sonic levels? <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. It was, 100% I, it was. It was. But, but it wasn't the whole thing that it was like bringing them into 3D or something? Like well, I, two and a half D. Okay, I don't did, know. I, I, think it, I think it recreated classic levels from old games and then did new uh, level designs with the same art style, I think. Do not quote me on that. That's a long hmm. time. Are these like the great Dreamcast games or something? No, Sonic Generations was a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 game. Hmm. So, Yeah, I, I mean, I never played it. I, I feel like that was one of the last well-reviewed Sonic games, maybe before we got into like Sonic Mania. And uh, I don't know, there's been a couple newer ones that were okay, well-reviewed, I guess. But, but I thought Sonic Generations was, people kind of liked it. So I thought there'd be some excitement around this, but... I feel like the title is kind of confusing and I just feel like there's a lot of Sonic stuff right now. Like they are going on overload, you know, ever since the movies came out, like just every year there's been like two Sonic games coming out and I can't keep track of them all. I did play a bit of the trial for Sonic superstars. The one that came out last year and it was not good. I don't understand the, the love for Sonic. Never have. See our most overrated games of all time episode if you want to hear more talk about that. All right. Next up, Dave the Diver, least PlayStation edition, uh, coming in April. I just finished Dave the Diver last this week. And also part of that, a Godzilla announcement, which was pretty cool. I thought that was a pretty neat uh, yeah. and official music. It seems completely official. Uh, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a definitely a cool, weird, interesting crossover. Um, I still haven't, I, like, after all the trying to catch up for year-end stuff, I have not even fired up Dave the Diver. Like, I'm kind of embarrassed, but it just has never called to me. So I do need to play it, but... Um, that, you'll be regretting that statement. Sorry. Yeah, look, Frank looks very satisfied. <laughs> Abler himself didn't play Dave the Diver. Didn't dabble. Yeah, just, it never, One of the best ones. I bought it. I was like, okay, it's getting good reviews. I should check this out. And then I just never felt the urge. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, next up, V Rising, a game that's been in early access on Steam for a while. Access on Steam. Anyone done anything with this game or played it or have early access? No. Is Did it not? early access no. on Game Pass as well? I, I don't know. Let me have not take seen anything about this game, to be honest with you. I like the title sounds familiar, but some kind of vampire top down survival game. I didn't look bad. Uh, I didn't, doesn't move my needle, but I think people on the Discord were said the V Rising on Steam is pretty good. So maybe it'll be good. Hmm. Yeah, but I thought it looked it's, okay. It's not on Game Pass, or at least not Game Pass PC, from what I can tell. Okay, that's where I'd probably expect it anyway. So I actually thought um, this was uh, the Apocalypse Studios game when I first saw it. 
Oh, I, I, I thought that was the Moon Studios game for a second that we mm. got a glimpse of at a previous event. So, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. A lot of games that look like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe not the best sign, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Some Silent Hill news. Silent Hill, the short message. We had heard about this first-person Silent Hill game. I think it had a different code name uh, in a previous state of play. But apparently it's just a short, it's a full game, but it's a very short game. Uh, and it's free out to play. today. It's free. And oh, it's is it out, out today? Yeah, it's on the store now. So Are we, are we looking at a new genre? New genre? PT-like? PT-like. Ooh, that's mm. good. Based on the, the article Sean's sending me that claims any top-down action game is a Hades-like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't like where we're going with these likes, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this, I, I might check it out. It might be an easy platinum. Uh, I haven't looked to see if there's a platinum for it yet, but Sean, you power, power picks hasn't done a guide yet. How could they, they, they wouldn't even know. Come I'm on. Those guys aren't right burning the midnight oil. Come on. Nope. They should be, they should have it up by now. It's been like four hours, five hours. Well, Sean, you're gonna, you must want to play this thing a second we're done on this call. Uh, I mean, I'm like, I'm not a huge Silent Hill head, but I'm curious. I, it's it's free, so it makes me think that it's probably not good. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the uh, the thought that comes to mind. But uh, maybe it's just really short, in which case, I'm down for that. You don't have one of those cone head things? What are they called? Pyramid head? Pyramid Head. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Thanks. Play your Silent Hill games with. <laughs> All right. So the the star of the Silent Hill show, the Silent Hill Two remake, which was on a couple a couple of our most anticipated lists, uh, was it on yours too, Huck? Was it on all three? No, I don't think so. Didn't think so. Okay. Uh, this looked pretty rough. Uh, for a kind of big budget remake, or at least that's what it was in my mind when it was first announced, like a complete remaster of a classic game. Environments looked okay. Lighting, not bad, but animation combat, it was fucking jank city. This thing was a little stinky. Potential <laughs> turd vibes coming off this game, and everyone on the Discord disagreed. Like, this is bad news. This was a... I this was a no-brainer game. This was going to sell 10 million copies day one. Now, uh, people are people are saying things out there. <laughs> the best part of this whole trailer was that that door with like the handle that was a hand, and then it like turned and dropped something. I was like, that looked amazing. And then it was all downhill from there. I think that was the first like five yeah, seconds a- of the trailer. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I, like this is probably more embarrassing for me than an indication of the trailer, but I'll just give you my impression as I was watching it, the way they introduced it, they were like, okay, here's this new free game that we're putting out there. And now here's a, here's a, I forget how exactly how they put it, but they're like, here's, here's another taste or something like that. Special and I was like, treat. So I thought it was more of the free game. And I was watching it, and that seemed to fit with what I thought it was. And then it oh said Silent Hill 2 Remake. I was like, what? <laughs> so I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's... Out. This guy was watching, you know, you know, all fairness to Sean, he was coming in hot for this thing. So he was... Yeah, I was, I was doing some dishes while I was watching. So what? it could be, it could be a, a thing. But I mean, I was I, that was a thing that caught my attention that I was actually kind of paying attention to. So... I don't know. There's probably some iconic Silent Hill 2 stuff in there for people who know Silent Hill 2 that, you know, I should have that should have given it away. But I, I guess the quality of it kind of seemed comparable to me. I don't know. All right. I thought it looked worse. I thought it looked worse than the PT like we saw. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. But that's just me. I mean, uh, the PT like is easy. You're in like a hallway. So that's it. It's yeah, it's first person. Look. The lighting looked yeah. good. I, it's probably really short. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to compare it to in terms of Silent Hill Two on PlayStation Two, but uh, yeah, not a good showing for that game. I can tell you, there's going to be big meetings at that company. What are the odds it comes out in 2024? Ninety-five mm, percent. Oh, okay. 
this could be a Sonic the Hedgehog movie situation where they put a bad version out on purpose to get people talking <laughs> about it. And they already have better models. So like, let's release a crappy version of the trailer so people get pissed. And then we'll say, we, we're, we're addressing your concerns. And the next time you show it, it looks amazing. That's really what every company should do. Well, it's interesting because I feel like the Silent Hill fans are a little bit upset already because there was that thing that came out at Halloween that, if I'm not mistaken, was a big dud, wasn't it? That Silent Hill Ascension thing or whatever that was. I don't... Like, I, I don't really know what it was exactly. The Silent Hill game comes out at Halloween and nobody has heard of it. Did it even come out at all? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, it, Probably it was not. like some like live stream interactive TV series thing or something. But I don't know. I, I feel like it's hopefully that free game is decent. <laughs> Sounds like a good game to play while you're doing the dishes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next up, the game that might have came along and steal the show judas mm. people were loving this game on the discord uh the spiritual successor from a studio uh is it campfire or something like that yeah ghost fire ghost story ghost story ghost game story. the campfire logo uh i think it's a bunch of people who worked at the, the developers who made bioshock and what was the name of that company was it just 2K? I thought, yeah, it was 2K Boston. 2K, I, I yeah, and 2K Marin. Uh, so looks a lot like Bioshock in a good way, I'd, I'd say. It, it seems like it's its own thing, an interesting world, not like Bioshock, but definitely proportions on character, art style, combat, all very Bioshock-like in a first person. Very. Which I'm personally fine with. I want uh, some version of Bioshock to still exist. So... Uh, we'll get to another spiritual successor later in the show, but the, you know, these all come down to, can you achieve triple a polish of those games? You're trying to be like with the budgets of non triple a games. And uh, the trailer looks like it is, but there's all those little things that add up that the closest one I've played is, Callisto Protocol was pretty close to Dead Space. It was shorter, didn't have quite the same level, but it got close. Uh, so if, if they get close, I am super hyped for everything I've seen about Judas. Yeah, I, I, this was the one that, out of all the, the games that were shown, where I was like, oh, I actually really want to play this. But there was an element of it. Maybe it's just the character designs. I'm not sure. But something about it, the way it looked, it was like, this looks like Bioshock, like when Bioshock came out. Like, shouldn't it be a little more modern feeling or updated? I, I don't know. It didn't impress me as much visually as I was hoping Same. it would. Same. Didn't even get this guy away from his dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have much to say. I mean, it looked so much like Bioshock. I was kind of hoping that Ken Levine would do something slightly different, maybe. But I guess this is his wheelhouse. He did like Deus Ex too. So it's pretty similar. First person. I just hope there's not like audio diaries everywhere. <laughs> that, like, Dude, the, the auto, mean, audio diary level was like the how many there were, I think was pretty great in Bioshock. And it revolutionized playing them while you explore. Some games today don't even do that. I have to listen to some collectible in a menu. So all praise to Bioshock, and I cannot wait to play Judas. <sighs> okay, then. This guy's Case loving, closed. Loving Judas. Sean, this game is made... Like, it's got a cool world. It's kind of <laughs> cyberpunk It's Bioshock shock in space. What more do you need to, to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's true but didn't even have I, like hey, splicer I, dudes well there's sure. enemies that attack you yes there's effects didn't it have <laughs> like those helicopter robot things flying around as turrets? well just like in Bioshock turrets, Shock, tur turrets. <laughs> pretty sure it had a lot Possibly. of stuff lots of games have turrets <laughs> with helicopter blades I don't know about that I could be misremembering I could be just putting Bioshock in its place but I'll just say this I watched it twice on one time speed. We'll leave it at that. Wow. <laughs> that is Holy. a big commitment right there. <laughs> that is a big commitment. Uh, next up, 
Metro, some VR games, Metro Awakening VR and Legendary Tales, which comes out next week. Metro Awakening is like a long time away, I would say. I'll just say Legendary Tales looks like Dungeons of Eternity. Seems like there's a million of these types of like medieval combat fantasy games that generally don't look that good. But any thoughts on these uh, games? Sean, you're the VR guy. What do you say? Well, the Metro one is interesting to me just because it, like, it's kind of taking a AAA franchise, putting it in VR, which I want more of. So I'm interested, uh, although I haven't really played much of the Metro series. Uh, the other one, uh, as you mentioned, Legendary Tales, it, like it, it does seem like just a co-op dungeon crawl type game. I believe it is out for MetaQuest already. Pretty sure. And I feel like I've heard pretty good things about it, but like, I don't know, Dungeons of Eternity feels like that has kind of kind of broken through and has, you know, has more hype than this game. So I'm already like, well, I got bored of Dungeons of Eternity already. So uh, I'm kind of surprised into this. Dungeons of Eternity didn't make a push to get on PlayStation. It feels like there's an opportunity for not a lot of these types of games where Oculus is kind of flooded with them. I would say uh, like these kind of co-op combat games. And I, I can't make heads or tails of half of them, but Metro awakening looked really good. Uh, I thought the art style and the portrayal of the hands and weapons was like really well done. And it, it did not feel like, like a jank VR trailer, like the second game did. So uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty hyped for that game. Yeah. Uh, any games here that are gonna, you know, give you the VR flu or what? Are we good? Definitely not. <laughs> Skipped. <laughs> okay. Just, I saw that. You know. You know. It's bad when they have to like put the PlayStation VR two logo in the corner. That's that tells me it's time to skip ahead. So it's great. I love when they do that. It's perfect. <laughs> nice little watermarks for your <laughs> yeah. your left arrow. Or they right should just put. Here. They should just put the two arrows beside the PSVR two to indicate. Just go ahead and skip ahead. It's perfect. I skip nothing and I watch everything twice. Uh, <laughs> next up, Dragon's Dogma 2. A lot of people hyped for this game coming out March 22nd. So very soon. Uh, Huck, you feel like the RPG guy. What are your thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2? Have you played yeah. original Dragon's Dogma? I did, but probably only for half an hour, an hour. Very short amount of time. Wouldn't say I know anything about the game or the series. But this one really impressed me with like the combat and the characters, uh, the enemy characters, the creatures uh, that like there's like a dragon and then almost like some sort of like minotaur almost beast. Um, were, like jumping and, on the back and it was yeah. like this kind of thing, combat that I don't know how that's going to work, but it's an interesting idea. Yeah. And it seemed like very, very um, grounded almost like, you know, they would, it would feel like, they were being blocked by the the creature as they're trying to attack it, or they were jumping on top of it, like you said, and actually like sticking onto it or ri almost like riding it while they're hitting it. And I don't know, it just felt very polished, almost maybe almost like a polished monster hunter type yeah, like, yeah. video, but um, it looked really interesting. They didn't really show any of the RPG nature, but there was definitely like a team with you. So it's hard to say if this is like, if there's going to be multiplayer in this game, I'm not sure. I don't really know anything about Dragon's Dogma, Dogma 2, but... Um, it looks yeah, like it, no multiplayer. I feel like we did okay. talk about this maybe last time we... Yeah, I, I was just going to it. So the, the idea is when they did a little retrospective on a Capcom showcase, I think the d creative director of Dragon's Dogma was saying the whole idea behind Dragon's Dogma was to feel like a, a co-op game, but it's all driven by AI. So mm -hmm. you kind of can dictate kind of the play styles of your companions and it's intended to feel like multiplayer, but a single player experience. So I don't know if the first game achieves it or if this one will, or if it's still attempting to be that in any way, uh, but it definitely looks good. And yeah, it did, I, I was just going to say, I it don't did go feel... back to the first, but I want to, I've said that a million times though. <laughs> uh, yeah. It did feel like the, AI companions were actually like participating in the battle, which isn't always the case in action RPG 
games. They, you know, they kind of get the feeling they're just kind of hanging out on the side, waiting for you to tell them what to do. And uh, I don't know. It felt felt good. I don't know. I'm interested. It's it's move my needle for sure. I could be completely wrong about this, but I get the sense that the companions have something similar to. I think it's called the Gambit system in one of the Final Fantasy games. Final and, Fantasy and, uh, Twelve, I think. Yeah, I I think I, this is pure. The purest form of speculation I've ever done on this show. So, uh, please do not feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but don't think I'm saying anything definitive here. Next up, Rise of the Ronin, which is veering into let's play it already. I'm getting a little sick of, of hearing about it. Uh, and obviously compared a lot to Ghost of Tsushima, Sekiro. Uh, this footage we saw definitely sold more of the open world aspects of the game including a city everything else we'd seen to my recollection yeah. was in kind of landscapes um fields open environments so seeing a city location was kind of interesting uh which even in those other games that i mentioned there's no real sense of like a a, a bustling city in that era's equivalent so i think that's an interesting feature i'm still excited for the game because i generally think team ninja does awesome combat so i i think if the combat's good which i think it's going to be i thought the traversal looked fun and i'm i was already in i'm still in but let's just play it don't need to hear anything else about it definitely had more assassin's creed vibes uh, while i was watching this trailer than uh the previous ones but yeah i'm still in on this game i i this was definitely on one of my anticipated slots and i would say it's still there hasn't moved still looking forward to it yeah i'm interested i, I mean i liked ghost of tsushima I, i'm not as big on team ninja because most of their games are pretty hard and i'm just not into that so uh i i mean it's not from what i understand not a souls like so that's a plus in my books but um i don't know i don't know where i sit on this one like the world does look nice and and the traversal looks cool so all that stuff i'm into but there's still a lot of focus on combat and sort of the precision of the combat which makes me think that yeah it's probably going to be a pretty challenging game yes i know i'm repeating some things i said on our ghost of tsushima review which is on uh, youtube.com forward slash game junk but you know the combat was okay in that game it certainly wasn't amazing to me, all the strengths of that game were the non-combat side missions, the world, the locations, the main story. Uh, so if this game can... I'm less confident that Team Ninja can deliver on those things, but if they do with their kind of trademark combat, this could be a home run. I'm not holding my breath, though. All right, next up, Until or Dawn. It oh, could oh. have the story of like Metroid Other M. For sure. <laughs> that but uh it also could be you know another when i make my documentary about neo sekiro and then this game and then whatever uh from software comes back with and maybe a little kind of side story about ghost of tsushima and it's gonna have play a major role in that documentary i can't wait these studios must hate each other <laughs> I would love to hear the shit talk that happens at these two studios. Uh, next up, Until Dawn, I, I got the sense that people already knew about this. I didn't, but uh, Until Dawn coming with a PS5 remaster and to PC. I never played the original. Too scary for me. Uh, and you guys care about this? I mean, I... I, I, I yeah, sure. I, I never... I haven't played Until Dawn. I played a bit of what was their follow-up game? Well, I guess they had a bunch, but the yeah. the one that uh, was the most similar. The something, the quarry? That's quarry. right, yeah. Played a bit was of that. that. The third one? What? Or are you talking the Man of Medan trilogy? No, no, I was talking about the quarry. I played a bit of that. Mm. And I have been meaning to play this. So in Anthology, some ways sorry, anthology. Someone's gonna correct you. <laughs> Man of Medan anthology, not trilogy. <laughs> Uh, I've been meaning to play this, so in some ways it's like, oh, cool, I'll play this new enhanced version instead. But there's also a part of me that's like, I don't know, these remakes of games that are not that old kind of bugs me a bit. Uh, and I like, I own the, the other version, so I'm like, do I need, like, what are they enhancing here? How how enhanced is it going to be? And 
I don't know. I mean, it looks nice, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to play it, I guess. We'll see. And just to fully acknowledge my embarrassment level here, it's the Dark Pictures Anthology, which I had to look up, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> and the first game was The Man of Medan. So there's already been several YouTube comments left before you corrected yourself. So that's all right. <laughs> I'm aware that I made a mistake. Yeah, I must say for this one, I played the first one. Um, I got, I don't know, maybe halfway through or something like that from what I recall. And I don't remember it leaning so heavily into like the saw like aspect of it, like the torture house kind of aspect of it. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's kind of weird, the marketing angle they've taken. And I don't even recall the game. I mean, obviously the characters, some of the characters die and stuff, but I don't recall it being like so gruesome. So maybe this is dialing up the deaths in a more explicit way than before. But mm. uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, guess. I will say I, the hook, the hook of a saw scenario made it. I didn't know about that. Same as you. It made it more intriguing to me as like a structure for a game. So not a bad the, idea. The, the one other thing I'm wondering about is like, I know. So I think one of the appeals of this game when it originally came out is that people would get together and play it as a group even though there wasn't like an official co-op feature in the game, but I think they later added it in some of their other games. So I'm wondering if they'll add it back in now to this version of Until Dawn. Um, I yeah, because there were like 11 characters or something like that. There's like a high amount of characters, I think. Yeah, and the quarry had like a... Roles? Like, like if you're in the room playing together, you assume different characters' decisions, I guess? Yeah, like that was, I think, what people just kind of did on their own initially or like as a group, they would decide on decisions like what path to take or whatever. Uh, but then with the core, you could pick each person could play characters and make decisions for characters and kind of divide it up that way. And I think there was an online feature for that as well. I think, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't see anything on the PlayStation blog about that. So, yeah, I doubt, I highly doubt that they would add new features. And we have talked way too much about this. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the star of the show, Kojima san, with after a very long Death Stranding 2 uh, trailer, gameplay, story, it, it had it all. This game looked really good. And like the Decima engine is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> this engine is so good. I'm really excited to go back and play uh, Horizon games. I, like if I, I know I've said this already, but I want to go back and play both Horizons so bad. Uh, as soon as Prince of Persia is done, that might be the next thing on my list. But you know, this game looks so weird. And even more weird and in interesting than the first one, I should say Death Stranding is kind of the game du jour on the Film Junk and Game Junk discords. And I have been really wanting to go back and play the director's cut. So, um, did you play? <laughs> sorry, did you play ahead. before? I played four hours, not that much. Sean, I think, played the most, right? How much did you play, Sean? Yeah, I feel like I played eight or 10 hours at the time, but it's been a while. Okay. So I only played like, an hour or two tops. And I feel like I have no idea what's going on in this trailer, but I'm so interested in like everything they're talking about, even though none of the terms make any sense. The people with like the flapping shoulder gloves, what the hell is that? Yeah. Like there's just so much stuff. I, what it's just the, so mind boggling. The companion. That's like a stop yeah, marionette stop it or something. Like <laughs> yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Kojima's I, just messed up, man. Like <laughs> I, I, I really like the weirdness. Like, there's no question that the trailer plays is a bit pretentious considering just how long it is, and it's just basically story and cinematic stuff. But the visuals are amazing. Some of the ideas look so interesting. I mean, I'm definitely back in and wanting to play Death Stranding one again and it's yeah it's weird how this like and i really don't you know there's no real gameplay shown in it but i mean they I walk just in those terrains it's the same as the first game yeah i i 
yeah, it doesn't. I get the sense that gameplay is evolving a bit in this, but I'm not sure how much. And like, it just it visually looks incredible. I, I don't know if it's fun. I don't really care. And I should also <laughs> say, uh, Death Stranding one released on iOS devices this week. What? I think it's like twenty five bucks. Now it has to be certain models of iPhone 15 Pros, I think is required, and certain iPads, but kind of interesting. They're it, never mind Helldivers. The game that is trying to get forced down your throat, down the world's throat, is Death Stranding. And I think it's working. I think <laughs> it's gonna work. I think everyone is gonna play Death Stranding by the time well, they gave it. Done. I got it for free on Epic store when it was free, like last year. And I think it's been free multiple times. Yeah. So yeah. that, that would to give totally away a free back code up. Like I can't give it away. No, yeah, that would totally back yeah, up your force it. feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I must say though, there was, they showed some guns in this one though. And I don't know if there was weapons in Death Stranding one, or at least I didn't see any, any trailers or anything like that. I don't know if, Sean, did you run it across? I, guns? I never got to a point where I was using a gun, but I'm pretty sure there was because, or okay. at least I remember seeing trailers for the director's cut of Death Stranding and being like, "What? There's guns!" Mm, <laughs> so, okay, uh, yeah. But I must say, my hype level was high for this game, and then it, there was a certain point in the trailer we reached, and then it started going down. Does anyone anyone care to take a guess when that happened? When the character starts walking. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Although this time I'm fine with the walking. Once the environment, uh, like the desert environment, and uh, I think Sean's onto it. I think Sean's onto finished. it. Well, is I was it, gonna say once Baker? Kojima started talking, but oh no, <laughs> oh no, it was once someone else started take, talking. Yeah, Troy Baker. Once he started uh, talking, I was like, oh no, not again. <laughs> this guy does everything. I, I know his know. voice now way too much. When Ooh, I when you can, he? he was the like brother dude in red with the guitar oh that's who that was yeah, yeah. i kept looking at the model because all the other characters look like you know who's playing them and i was like this who what actor is this i feel like i know who they are uh it all makes sense i will say that character and the guitar looked really cool so uh, <laughs> play baker for this one it's right up right up kojima's alley like let's have you know what you know what we should do we should do a fucking crazy electric gun guitar why not? And to <laughs> shoot it, the guy strums the guitar. Why not? You know? Yeah. Apparently, the, old, the old doctor guy. Is that George Miller? Yeah, I was just going to say George Miller. Yeah. And so know. people were putting a, the flame guitar from Mad Max Mad on Max? the board. So oh, it all, okay. it, like, I think this all ties together. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I mean, can we just say, I, I mean, I guess this ties into the other announcement that came afterwards, but like, this guy just needs to direct a movie already. Like, give it up. You're trying to like be buddies with all the filmmakers out there. All your games are like 90% cinematics. Just direct a movie. Yeah, well, I hear I you. Mean, I, I stand by doing. my my previous comments that Kojima, as much as I appreciate the weirdness and what he does, might be a bit overrated as a game designer and overrated as a potential director <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm definitely curious with his uh jordan peele hybrid i think they could work together in an amazing way but okay what do you think go. sorry do you think ahead. what they teased at the end is the is the jordan peele thing or do you think it's something else no 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 that's a new so that's a new game and i'm assuming movie as well I think the plan is whatever that property is, they reveal, I believe it's called Fizzint with a period at the end, which is as they were probably working any way they can within their contracts and legal requirements to say, this is Metal Gear, but it's not called Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. As we like to say, or lots of people like to say, the spiritual successor to Metal Gear. And I guess they tease the fact that whatever game this is, I don't, we don't know if it's a direct like relationship with a film, like kind of like the matrix and enter the matrix games uh, tried to do, but from the start doing something like that, or if it's just a film version and a game version, I'd probably it could be like quantum break. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be a movie in theaters and that will, or maybe a streaming show that will work in tandem or with the game, but who knows, but it's well, they, they did, they did, like pull out at the end and it was like 
didn't it say like Columbia Pictures or something? So and I mean, it definitely the, like, seems to be. Soundstage. Yeah, seems to be implying that it's not just like a interactive movie that's a video game. Like, yeah, there's an actual movie component to this. Yeah, I guess I got the sense there's going to be a game and a movie. I, I can't say exactly why, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I got that feeling too. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for, and I kind of like the idea of, you know, we've seen so many versions of snake and like metal gears done everything. So taking that gameplay, I'm actually surprised more games haven't copied it directly. Now that I'm saying that out loud and reimagining it with a different character and world, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. Yeah, it is an action espionage title. It is weird that they didn't say, I, th- I believe the three words at the top of Metal Gear Solid are tactical espionage action. They've removed the tactical. I don't know if that was a legal thing or a... <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, and they, they also didn't use the word stealth, which is kind of what that genre has become known as now. So I don't know what that means, but... I thought the word stealth was used. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe your, your faucet was running when they said stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Not Possibly. sure. But I thought I heard that, but I think that not saying tactical is a legal thing. That's officially part of like the logo and title for Metal Gear Solid. So, Maybe. oh, I mean, espionage implies more than just stealth, though. It implies like, you know, militaries or governments and some sort of, you know, James Bondy type stuff. So maybe we're getting a James Bond game. Does <laughs> Sony own the rights to James Bond? Well, uh who's working on james bond i can't remember now uh the hitman studio oh really yeah oh the game i'm talking about the movie rights though oh i think amazon owns it now oh because it was so sony MGM. owned it could have some sort of like crossover yeah. kojima directed 007 I don't Sony, Sony was game. involved in one of one of the recent bond movies like they co- released it or something like that casino royale is a sony blu-ray yeah 100 percent. yeah hmm. don't you remember the, the the case and the packaging sean when casino royale dropped no blu-ray you don't have it memorized uh, sean Come i on. didn't i didn't own that movie that blu-ray for a long time what? i wasn't the You're biggest fan of casino royale when it originally came out wow okay yeah. Fizzant, people were jacked about this. I'm mildly jacked. And lastly, I'll just say Rebirth, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, another state of play next week dedicated to that game. So, I mean, I, I know I'm, what it's going to so be. Much I don't know if I need a state of play for it, but whatever. It looks all right. I can't wait. It's all right. I'm just, I know what it is. I just want to <laughs> play it. You've got. 29 days. Just let me play the game. Oh, I want to play the remake so bad. I do not have time to play the remake. 29 days. <laughs> Too much. I can't do it. Uh, okay. Anything else before we give our letter grades for this? No, I mean, it was overall, I just kind of, there was some good stuff shown, but like between this and the Microsoft thing, I'm starting to feel like this year, the way it's shaping up, I'm just not like, there's not a lot of stuff I'm super excited about. And I'm hoping that it'll just be stuff that I, I don't suspect will be my thing. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, I actually love this game, but we'll see, I guess. Yeah. I guess it aligns with the general. I thought that 2024 is not looking all that bright for games, except for that switch Two and Mario Odyssey Two, which we don't even know about yet. Uh, and I kind of agree. I, I, I feel like I've seen everything in this before. Not a lot of new stuff except for Fizzint, which I didn't say this. This game is probably five years away or something like that. Like, well, they said they're not even starting until after Death Stranding 2. Yeah, exactly. So Death Stranding 2 is 2025. I mean, so it's fine. I, I put more stock in this than the Metroid Prime 4 flash screen. Uh, that we saw a long time ago, but still, I'll believe it when I see it. I, there's not that much to be hyped for at this point. I like to see yeah. things. Seeing is believing. So, Death Stranding 1 
came out 2019, tail end of 2019, but 2019. So if Death Stranding 2 comes out 2025, that means next game is 2031, potentially. Yeah. Oh, it's it's going to be a while. I'll be dead, <laughs> most likely, by the time Fizz End comes out. Uh, or I'll play it from my uploaded consciousness, potentially. <laughs> Your neural link? Yep, exactly. <laughs> All right, so letter grades. This is a really tough one for me, not going to lie. You guys know yours yet? B minus. That's where I was leaning to. I, I I feel B minus is a good spot for this one. Yeah, I was thinking B minus, but the more I think about it, it might be a C plus. It's tough. Um, a light B minus. I'm thinking B I think minus. I, I, I give it a little bit of an edge because there is some original stuff in here. It's not all just, you know sequels and stuff although there are a bunch of those but. i've seen everything in here before is there one thing i've seen that i didn't know about previously silent, silent hill, hill the short you. message yeah, i've seen that message. though i just didn't know it came out today they've shown that before oh really yeah mm. yep c plus thank you <laughs> but when you say i got the blue haze i don't i evaluate did they show death what i play before? what did they show death Stranding two stuff before yeah. just to say it's coming out Oh no, I've seen a little C bit, yeah. Okay. C plus. What about the Sonic game? That is new. <laughs> a new shiny new turd. Uh, <laughs> a shiny new turd. Based on previous Very games. Shiny. Based on previous <laughs> turds. <laughs> Come on, Nintendo. You gotta save us. Polish that turd, baby. All right. Let's move on to what we played. Uh what should we start with? Well, you got to talk Suicide Squad. Okay, you got the I, early access. You paid for early access just so you could give us this special report. Yet again, and Sean, this is going to allow you to speak of the beta. <laughs> yes. You weren't sure if you could before, but I'm going to now. And I idiotically paid for the 72 early hours early access for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League because I cannot help myself. I have a problem and fired it up shortly after midnight took a break i'm like i don't want to stop playing prince of persia but i paid for this fucking thing i have to play it so I fired it up and this, this was after they put it back up right because the when it initially that, was in new launched, zealand. that was in new zealand oh, okay different country sean different time zone no no retracting in north america um and when i started the game i was like this seems very familiar and what I mean by that is when Sean and I played the open beta or closed beta, pardon me, it was very, like, I found it to be very odd. It start like the world felt empty. The sound, as I said to Sean offline or recently, it felt like a test room and it felt like they created this kind of custom experience to just accelerate learning the controls to kind of get you into playing the game and seeing what it's all about, like all how the different characters control, because I figured that's what they'd want to test, right? What issues happen when people play with these characters and, you know, you're not going to have to sit through all the cinematics at the beginning of the game and all that garbage. And that is how the game starts with this awkward kind of cold open. Honestly, I've never experienced anything like it. It is the weirdest and perhaps worst uh, introduction to a triple a game and its mechanics I've ever played. Um, and that's not to say I'm writing off the game, but it, it's just very odd when as personally, I would think every studio, uh, especially for a game like this, the thing you are, and you have nine years, the thing you are the most concerned with absolutely cannot fail at is the first two hours of the game. Like that, whatever happens to the rest of the game, whatever you have to cut, that first two hours has to be great, especially with the state of Steam refunds and all these other things. That two hours has to absolutely crush uh, if we've spent this much money on this game. And it is brutal. Uh, and I, I think a lot of the debates that have been had about the game are how do the different characters control? Are they all the same? If I can switch characters at any time, What's a transference of skills like? Is it going to be seamless? 
And if that's the case, are those characters going to play too similarly? Uh, and like, what's the point of having the different characters? And the truth to me is actually that not only was I like poorly taught how to play one game, I was almost poorly taught how to play four games. Like each character Uh-oh. plays differently. And by the time I'm done, I'm like, I think there's only one character I'm comfortable playing with right away. And it was the shark, which I, I do find kind of fun. Uh, that being said, I see potential in the gameplay of all four characters, but after playing an hour, then my internet, like coincidentally got shut down for 10 hours by Kojiko and it kicked me out of the game. So oh, that's, that's where I stopped. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of ready to stop, but I was making myself play, but I, I was like, I'm choosing the, the least complicated character right now. And if I was a game designer, that would be a complete failure. I, I would want someone to be like, oh, these were all fun. And I don't know which one I want to play first. And I defaulted to the least interesting character because it felt like other games to me. So I don't think this game teaches the player how to play well at all. And to me, what they did in an hour should have been five hours of gameplay of like getting used to certain ideas, then switching to another one. I don't know if this is motivated by some sense to get them in this looter shooter um, microtransaction driven game. It's, it's kind of mind boggling to me. It has microtransactions. I'm pretty sure that, or that was part of the, I don't know if they punted that, but it felt like the whole game was designed around destiny and those types of games. Um, don't quote me on that. I guess, I guess I, I had that memory for some reason. Uh, but, uh, it's, it is a really for a triple a game that's been worked on for nine years one of the worst like intro hours i've ever played usually after two hours you're like okay this game is boring the first hour is always usually decent and then you're like it starts to reveal its weaknesses after an hour so it looks like there are microtransactions i don't i don't know specifics if it's just cosmetic I assume that's mostly what it is, but I think so too. Um, but I, I, I really, well, that's what destiny is for the most part too, and stuff like that. But I really, except for expansions. And I'm, I would assume this game, the plan was to do expansions at some point, but I, I do generally like the feel of the combat, but I, I, I didn't say this yet. If I play this game, I feel like I've got to dedicate my life to it because it plays differently than any, any other game. The beauty of destiny and Fortnite is they control like every other shooter. So if I leave the game and come back to it a month later, I know how to play it. I could never leave this game and come back to it, let alone leave one character and switch to another one. I have to relearn how to play that character. It's a disaster from a design perspective like that. I don't know how this, if you're going to make this type of game, you have to convince yourself you can do this effectively. Like that would be the first thing you prototype. I don't understand. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying was kind of my experience with the closed demo, which I, I didn't play very much of. I basically just did the tutorial for each character and I started off really liking it with the first character. And by the time I got to the fourth, I was getting confused. And it was, I just remember Harley Quinn being difficult to, to like, I kept dying. I couldn't figure out how to use, like, she has like a grappling hook or something like that. Is that right? Yeah, it's like a swing. It's a drone that has a, a thing you swing from. Yeah. And I just, I found it difficult to control. And, uh, and yeah, like, I mean, maybe part of it is because it is a multiplayer game. The thought is you're going to play with your friends. You're going to pick the character you like, and you're going to stick with them. But obviously lots of people are going to play single player switching between all these characters. And, and it was hard to remember all the different buttons and stuff. Like it was a lot. So yeah, it might've been better to have like intro chapters for each character and then bring them all together or something like that. Even if you think of, we, as I've said many times, the the new trend in AAA games is multiple playable playable characters, right? And Ragnarok, different characters, they all play relatively the same with some subtle differences. This is drastic changes between them, which I think is a noble idea. Like, what's the point of having four characters that are basically identical? Is that that interesting? But then you're creating a design challenge for your your team. How are you going to teach this stuff effectively? And make it intuitive. And as of right now, it's not intuitive or effective. Uh, I guess I could see someone who loves this universe and finds 
the game is super fun or doesn't play a lot of games could get committed and immersed in this game because I think it has the potential to be fun, uh, which is probably their number one thing. But I don't know if they're going to get people to stick with it, to be honest. It does look really like it looks really good. Uh, but I, I guess I should say the cutscenes look really good. The world where you start off, it's like these islands that kind of looks like ass, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I, like you said, it felt like a tutorial specific area. Uh, it feels the, like a but, test room. Yeah. Like if, like when we would create like combat rooms and stuff for testing mechanics, this whole intro feels like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, so you didn't play much beyond that then or? Uh, no, my internet gave out and then I really haven't had time. So I paid yeah. $30 for that hour. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Oh my god! Well, I assume does the deluxe edition also come with like a battle pass or something like that? Like it must, oh, right? I think just some cosmetics. Yeah. Well, right. anyway, I'll be picking it up, trying it out. Talk more about it next week or the week after, whenever we're back. But uh, yeah, I'm. Not, I mean, and this is the thing. Maybe that maybe it's a good thing for them. People's expectations are going to be low, and then people will be pleasantly surprised. It feels like that could happen, but well, um, I would think internally they're having discussions. Uh, I think Gil said this on the Discord, and I was already thinking it and agreed. This game will be on a humble bundle in three months, so and, <laughs> and Game Pass for sure. So, don't unless you really want to play it. I think most people are getting the sense I'll just wait because if it's going to be microtransaction based, they want an install base and they can get it out there for as cheap as possible. They have to be having discussions about that right now. How soon do we get this out there for as free and as cheap as possible before the suckers like Frank pay for early access or after those people pay for that? So do you think they're yeah. going to um, advertise on Super Bowl? No. No, you don't think so? You don't think they'll try to just throw all their money at the biggest pot and s hopefully they get some sales out of that? I think the discussions internally would be, is there any way to salvage this at this point? And uh, I'm honestly shocked that they decided to release it in February. Hmm. What is like Warner Brothers games? Like what is going on there? <laughs> like between this and uh cyberpunk I, I mean now people love cyberpunk so who knows if it even matters but yeah every game has a shot at a second life for sure i don't know if that really happened for gotham knights i feel like that kind of people never came back to it but i do want to go back to it yeah i kind of want to go back to it too uh i, I just want to say it, it has potential it's just a really bad first hour which is shocking in this day and age. Is did you get past that first hour though? Or is that all you played? No, my internet. Your, my internet okay. So yeah. Okay. Bye, bye. No, no internet. No game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So this is an online get required game. Even I guess it's, it's required to player? play. I was playing by myself, but yeah, I think mm -hmm. I read that it is. So it makes sense. Well, I guess they have micro transactions. They. Want you to spend, spend, spend. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, who's up next? Um, well, I'll mention something. So I, I already talked about this game, but just kind of an interesting uh, experience with it. So Vertigo Two, the VR game, still playing it on PSVR Two, and I think I mentioned that it was a little bit buggy. Um ran into a pretty major bug uh, around like the sixth level, get to the end of the level or what I think is the end of the level. And I hit a checkpoint and I die. And when it reloads, suddenly I'm back at some other checkpoint that was like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes ago. So I'm like, okay, that's a weird glitch. I just try to reload an earlier checkpoint and it's also reloading me back there. And suddenly all my checkpoints are loading me back there. I have no idea how that's possible, but um, 
at this point, I don't think I can play the game until they patch it because it's like every game is loading and I can't even like try to play back to where I was because it's some weird thing where it's like I'm under where I was. And so the enemies are like trying to shoot me through the ground, but I'm like in these sewers beneath it. It's really weird. Uh, so not not great, uh, but you know, I think the game itself was made by basically one developer. Really? Uh, and then I think the port is handled by a separate small team. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to wait for the patch and hopefully it fixes, gets fixed. I bought it based on your recommendation. I didn't play much of it though. Well, just, uh, don't play to level six, I guess. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Huck? Speaking of number sixes, I played Armor Core Six. I played a bit, uh, of it, not much. Yeah, so I was really shocked at some of the um, difficulty spikes that I ran into. The first boss is extremely difficult. I found I had to play through it probably five or six times to get through it bef- before progressing on, and then you know the next five or six missions after that were fine. And then all of a sudden I hit another one where all of a sudden I'm walking and all of a sudden I'm dead, like right away. And you have to like really try to change your approach on how, how you're doing some of these missions. So I, I never really got this game per se. I know it's on a lot of, you know, top, top lists for this year. And it seems pretty fun. Reminded me a lot of Ace Combat in the layout of how you get your missions and your mission structure. And then you kind of like go into this one-off kind of environment where you need to achieve something, which I like, I like these combat games and I I like the mission structure of this game. I thought it was fine, but then um, I didn't really understand any of the upgrade stuff. I bought a bunch of armor and didn't really notice any difference. Oh, bought a different gun. I think didn't, notice anything different so i don't know if i just forgot to equip it or i didn't pick the right thing or whatever i picked was the exact same kind of like uh shooting mechanic as the previous thing i had i'm not really sure what happened i didn't get deep enough but i probably played uh six or seven missions into this game and i was i was kind of liking it but at the same time the the difficulty spikes kind of turned me off and um I did find some of the controls a little janky. Like I would kind of get stuck boosting. Dash, yeah. Yeah. And dashing when I didn't really mean to. And then I couldn't get out of it. And like I was struggling to kind of like revert that. And like, no, I want to shut this off. And I couldn't. And it was kind of frustrating at, at points. And then, you know, I'm trying to like just hit the guy in front of me. I accidentally dash. And all of a sudden I'm 500 meters away from him. And now need to backtrack so there are certain control things i probably if i played a little longer i would have got used to them and it would have been a little more smooth but um it's definitely a little too rough around the edges for me and um i didn't really uh get into it so it was fine yeah i was a quick dipping out because i was like just is it should should i evaluate this for my top 10 list and i got the sense i don't think it's for me really so uh, I bounced, but I, I, it had potential. It was kind of fun, but on Steam, it would not map to my controller. So as I'm playing with a controller, it kept telling me what to do on a keyboard. And I even tried restarting it and it wouldn't do it. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm hitting the right buttons and all this stuff. So I got pretty frustrated. All right. Uh, next up, perhaps in the first time, I'm going to say it in podcasting and list history, we're making... World news, world records here on the Game Junk Podcast. Whoa, that's what we do. I'm announcing my number one game of 2024 before I announce my top 10 of 2023. And that game (laughs) is Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And I cannot believe that the reviews are not better for this game. Uh, It's the developers of Rayman Legends and Origins. It has the best platforming of any game I've played probably since those Rayman games, and it's better than those games. It's got amazing puzzles, fantastic pacing. Uh, I personally love the art style. I know people are divided on it. I think it's fantastic. The story is actually good. I can remember events that have happened in this story, and I usually just 
you know, it's it's a well told story for a Metroidvania. Oh, so good, Scott. Metroid, like, oh my god, oh no, strike that from the record. Strike that. edit, edit coming up. Strike that from the record. Um, but I, I was so passionate, I forgot my own rules because I'm so angry that this <laughs> game is not getting more love because it is phenomenal. It is the best Metroid like. Unless it really fucks it up towards the end, it will be the best Metroid like I've ever played. And it borrows, uh, it's not the most original, it's borrowing all the best elements from all the best previous Metroid likes and combining it into one beautiful package. And I love it. Wow. A lot of love comes from Frank. I, I mean, I love it too. I, I don't know if I'm ready to say best Metroid like ever, but it's it's very solid the moving movement and platforming combat all feels great. Lots of interesting time-based powers starting to be unlocked. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think dude, the there's like have puzzle been... stuff in here that you don't get in these types of games. That's again a nice, refreshing pacing element. Yeah, and I think reviews have been good. Like we were talking about it, I think it was eighty nine. 86. The Metacritics for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Tekken 8 are higher than this game, which I haven't played those games yet. I'm debating buying them just so I can say that's bullshit. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I, I saw some criticism saying that people were kind of unimpressed with the boss fights. Okay. That was my one criticism. And it's not that the boss fights are bad. They're too easy. Like, yeah, I, I, the first bunch are easy until you get to. They've been. The I've died on a boss yet, which uh, I don't think is necessarily bad. The bosses are good. I want to play them for longer. So if this game has like a boss rush or something in there later, or some bosses get reused as enemies later, which I, I kind of like that as well. So I think that's a good take on that. So oh my god, I love this game. It it brings what. We complained about with Metroid Dread back. I ex and what I disliked about Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight was really gated as well. I would get somewhere and I'm like, I can't do this yet. I can't do this yet. I would just keep going to things I couldn't do. This game lets you explore so much. I got off track and I opened up a ton of the map and it wasn't even the right path. It is, it is they understand what makes a great Metroid like and they are crushing it. Yeah. Oh God, I love this game. You played it on Steam? No, uh, PS5. No achievements for Steam on Ubisoft games. We'll never uh, do that. I will never buy a Ubisoft game on Steam until they put achievements on there. You want to make a hundred million dollars easily, Ubisoft? Just put your achievements on Steam. You need a little cash flow. You're good to go. <laughs> so you're gonna throw up in your mouth a little bit with this Frank but so like I I think I mentioned I did the Ubisoft Plus and I was playing it on the Steam Deck but I'm also switching back and forth between that and Xbox and achievements do not auto pop so it's like when I'm playing on Xbox I get some achievements when I play on Steam Deck I don't get achievements so uh you're using the Ubisoft cloud save I guess yeah Ew, that is definitely bar for me. <laughs> Does not bother me at all, but um I mean just yeah. on, on its own using any Ubisoft platform specific feature is by default barf inducing. <laughs> yeah, all their like challenges and playing. stuff. Oh. Oh. But yeah. aside, I don't care about Ubisoft or what other garbage they do. This game is amazing. Yeah. Check it out. This game is not getting... This is the Jedi Survivor of this year. That's for sure. So, I mean, Sounds I've like seen, I need to play this one. I've seen a lot of... People are saying things, Frank. I've seen a lot of posts. I've seen a lot of podcasts with titles saying Prince of Persia is the first great game of 2024. I've seen that line many times. So it's it's getting praise. Just maybe not as much as you would I hope. just don't think it's strong enough praise. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Anyone else? I played... Uh, well, I played... I won't talk about games that are going to be on my top 10. So um, I played an oldie but a goodie. 
I played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective <laughs> on oh, Steam. Nice. I don't know if you guys remember this one. I think it was called The Mummy's Curse. And it was like a run of, I think, three games they made where it was kind of like full motion video games. And you had to listen to the clues, read newspaper articles. And then they gave you like the, they give you like the, uh, essentially like the phone book of London. And it's got all these names in it. And you can click on any of them. But each one you click on adds points to your score. And if you click on the long, the wrong one, it just has some generic like, oh, there's no one here kind of thing. So you could just like brute force click everyone's name and eventually try to work it out. But then at the end, you kind of have to go to the judge and be like, okay, who is who is to blame? And uh, they kind of have like three questions or sorry, a, a question with three answers. You pick one or four question, four answers. You pick one and you have to like kind of progress and answer like five in a row. Now it's not like, you know, you get one wrong and it's the end of the game. They basically say, nope, that's wrong. And then you just click the judge again and like try again. So um, I wouldn't say it's a, uh, there's no like real penalty for trying, trying it out and getting the wrong answer, but it, it's, it's a fun little game and it does have some, some fun aspects that you do have to pay attention to and actually like read the articles and take down people's names. If you want to get, you know, quote unquote, a good score, or even like, you know, it's not fun to just, uh, you know, mash through every option you possibly have. So um, it, it was just a fun little, there it is right there. Sega CD. Is that the mummy's nice. curse? It just says Sherlock Holmes consulting detective. Oh, this is volume two. Pardon me. Oh, yeah. It's weird because so, I, I think there was like a board game was the original version of mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah. I've always wanted to buy that board game. Never gotten around to it. But I think the video games just took some of the cases from the board game. So I guess it would make sense that maybe there's multiple volumes, but I don't think it was like, I think the board game has more, I think. I'm not sure. I I have three, I think, of these games on Steam. I don't know how many there are. Um, maybe there's just three. But um, yeah, it's uh, let's see, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detected Collection on Steam. There are only three, so I'm not sure if that's all that were made. But if there's Volume Two, that kind of implies that there's more than. I would say four, three games or four games. But yeah, so that's all I played. It was fun little trip down memory lane. Had a little nostalgia trip playing that game. I remember playing that probably on my like 386. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> um, so I, I've been dabbling with some stuff on Game Pass. I'm going to save that for another week. But I just want to real quick mention, I did play more Void Stranger which we talked about briefly last week. Nice. Oh, you're going Pal World for sure. Yeah, I haven't I I've, I haven't played enough to really say anything about it. So I'll try and play a little more for next week maybe. But um so this Void Stranger game as we said, it's kind of a Soko Bond game where you're pushing stuff around, you can pick up tiles from the floor and move them around the room and then there's enemies you're trying to avoid. But there's this meta element to it, and we weren't quite sure what it was. And I'm not going to spoil what it is because I haven't really seen it yet. But it's interesting because I've basically played through, like I've done a full run of the game, basically. I've played through all the rooms and gotten an ending, quote unquote. But it's not the real ending. It's not, I don't even think I rolled credits. And it kind of just puts you back at the start. And now there's things that you're starting to maybe pick up on that are in the rooms that you didn't notice the first time around, but now you're starting to be like, oh, okay, maybe I should be doing this. And I still, like, I've read little things on Reddit where it's like trying to see spoiler free, like what should I be looking for? And there's like patterns and things, but. Um, Feels like it's a bit of a witness vibe. De yeah, it definitely is. But it's just like, I don't know, like I, I'm going to try and play a little more, but like apparently you have to play through it like, a bunch of times to really get everything. And I don't know if I'm going to be that committed to this thing. How but long I, did the first run take you? Uh, I don't know, maybe like five or six hours. 
Uh, so that's I mean, probably we, why, where the 24 hour completion yeah, yeah, time exactly. comes from. But I will say just that first run, just the puzzles alone are still really solid and interesting. And like all the little mechanics they add and different variations of the enemies and the little tricks to different rooms. Like, I don't know. I really just thought the puzzle design was great. So just in that alone, it's worth playing, but uh, it does require probably some, some research or like a bit of dedication to really get to that next level. So, um, but if you are a puzzle fan, you might want to check it out. Nice. Okay. I think we're, we're good. We'll move on, wrap it up. Let's yep. wrap it up. Okay. So, uh, let us know what you thought of the state of play or your number one game of 2024. If you know it already in the comments <laughs> at youtube.com forward slash game junk discord links are there. Thank you for watching or listening. We'll see you with our top 10 lists next time. Bye-bye.